Hey guys, I'm going to run you through my 10 hour maintenance um, that I do on my motor. It's actually been 20 hours on this particular motor, but uh, every 10 hours you do the same maintenance. So I'm going to run you through that. Um, I basically do 11 different things on here, and if you look up in the description, you'll see my list of the 11 things, so you can reference that. First thing I do is clean my motor down with WD-40. While you're doing this, make sure you look for any cracks, nicks, uh, any sort of damage that you might find while rubbing it down. If you get any stubborn spots on any metal surfaces, you can use a little bit of carb cleaner as well. So while I was cleaning here, I noticed uh, a couple things. Um, this appears to be a little bit loose right there. You can see that movement. So also I think part of the cause is up in here. Um, I think this could be tightened a little bit. It is made to flex, but I don't think it's made to move quite that much. So I'm going to tighten those up. So now I'm going to check my belt. And when you check the belt, you can just come in here at an angle and you're checking the inside of the belt. And you see how there's all these teeth that mesh in with this. You're just checking those, make sure there's no cracks. Make sure you're no, not losing any of these ribs. Rotate your prop once again, make sure that your um, spark plug is disconnected and I'm just looking in here turning it all the way around so next I'm gonna come over here to the carb side and check that this hose this breather hose is unclogged I'm gonna check kind of pull the carb back here and just make sure I don't feel any leaks or anything in this tube um, you'll know if you got it because the motor will rev up um, that looks good. Now I'm going to just start checking bolts and I'm going to check um, these guys and I'm just doing this with my fingers and I'm checking these clamps as well. So on these clamps you can just kind of push them, try to rotate them to one side and they're not going anywhere. So that's good. It's going to move to these prop bolts. Some people check this kind of thing every flight. I do not, I confess. So I just tighten that guy, and if one rattles loose, it'll you sh should be able to feel it. Um, so felt all those. Uh, this guy should be well attached there. That feels good. Checking all these ones in here. Just everything you see. Just give it a little pull. Your fuel filter, you want to just make sure that there's not a lot of debris in there or anything. Uh, these are cheap. I'm going to let this one go. Uh, I see a couple specks of sand and something in there, but I think it's good. I'm going to check my throttle cable. Um, I'm not taking it all apart, but I'm just checking and making sure that all these clamps are um, the zip ties are, are holding this fast. Uh, this can be dangerous because if those came free, this cable could go into the prop and since it's lashed to your arm, it could suck your arm in. And so I actually added the second zip tie just as a second safety. Um, so now I'm gonna actually go over here, grab my throttle cable and just make sure this works nice and smooth. You should do this before every flight. Checking that, make sure this cable is just nice and smooth. It's not wearing, getting anything that might hang up. Because if you got a burr or something here, uh, what could happen is uh, you pull this and then the burr flares out and it gets stuck right there and this won't go out back in. You got a full on throttle condition, which is a very bad thing. And I'm going to check some of my suspension straps here. Um, so the main thing you want to check is the things that are holding your life. Um, look at this other camera. Um, these carabiners, you're looking for any kind of stress marks. This is just kind of surface wear right on the edge of the carabiner, but I'm looking for any kind of damage because this is holding my life. Um, of course, I do have my reserve, um, 
which would save me if this failed, but we don't want to go through that. So check the carabiners, then I'm checking this plate right here. And I can move this little strap around so that I can check the full plate there. Make sure there are no fractures or anything that's going to wear out. Uh, this is just folded in. But any kind of fraying, this looks real good to me. This is just like webbing material. So that looks good. Uh, you can check this all. It's not the end of the world if this fails, but uh, go ahead and check it because you might as well replace things before they fail. Sometimes lots of little things going wrong can cause a big thing, even if one little thing isn't a big problem. Um, check this connection. These are like riveted in. Make sure you know you won't want to have this at full throttle and have the motor fall off your back when these straps hold that on. Checking for wear and tear on my straps. Underneath, checking these connections. Those look good. That looks great. So we'll pull off this spark plug and see what it looks like. So you can see here that my spark plug is pretty well drenched in oil. So normally when you pull a spark plug out, you're going to look at um, the color of the inside tip there. And you can see in this photo, if it's white uh, or maybe your edges of the metal are kind of worn down, like they're almost like melting or wearing away, that's a sign of a lean mixture. If you've got a nice brown, tan, or gray color, that's a great mixture. You should just leave it how it is. And then if you have a rich mixture, you're gonna have a lot of oil coated on the spark plug. Unfortunately, Fresh Breeze, because the spark plug's mounted on the bottom, you can't really tell if it's a rich mixture because it always looks rich. So just clean up the spark plug. Uh, this is what mine looks like after I cleaned it up. It, it looks like a, an excellent mixture there. So all right, now I'm gonna clean out this carb chamber. And there's basically just this little clip under here that you just pull to the side and then this whole thing comes off. So I'm going to try to do that here with one hand. So before you pull this off, make sure you shut that red valve there. Otherwise, fuel will just flow down um, as soon as you pull off this bowl. And there will still be some that comes off when I do this. So inside here are these two little floats, and I'm just going to pull these out, and I'm going to set them right here so I don't lose orientation or anything. Clean this down in here a little bit, wipe it down with a towel, and then I'm going to see that little red um, filter thing. I'm going to clean that, and then... I've got a little jet there, and I just want to make sure that, that nothing's clogging that jet. I think I would have noticed it, but um, nonetheless, I'm going to try to clean that as well. You can see this thing is just, it's just a little tiny filter. It looks real clean, but I'm going to just wipe these little screens just in case there's a little film of little particles of debris on there. Just wipe that off, and I'm going to spray some carb cleaner through it from the inside, pushing any particles out. And it's kind of hard to see on that jet if there's anything blocking that. So I think I'm going to just pull it off and clean it out just in case. So with that 10 millimeter wrench, I've basically unscrewed this from here. It came right out. And now we can see a little bit better. But it's still pretty hard to see if that's clogged. It's such a tiny orifice. I'm going to I'm going to blow through it here. And actually, you know, I think it looks much well, you know, 
like maybe we had some little debris in there but I'm gonna run some carb cleaner back hole backwards and if anything was in there that will have pulled it out and when you tighten this you don't want to over tighten it because these are brass threads and they're not very strong so just snug it up Put my little filter back on right there. Putting my floats back in like that. And get this all aligned properly. I'm gonna make sure that everything's mating nicely up against my gasket. And then I can just go ahead and push that clip back into place. Make sure you get that clip all the way back. You do not want that to fall off during flight due to vibration or anything. So next thing I'm going to check are these exhaust screws, bolts, whatever you call them, with these springs. Um, so these are going to wear the fastest and then these and these, just you, the farther you get out of the motor you get more and more vibration. Uh, but basically what happens is this bolt uh, right where it goes through these flanges will wear and eventually the bolt will break. Um, so we shouldn't be at a point where uh, these are going to break, but uh, let's pull it apart. Pull the camera in here. So after 20 hours, you can see that, um, so, so here's the wear point. You see that little brown area? Um, but you can see that it is not affecting, here's another wear point right here, that brown area. But it is not decreasing the diameter of here significantly at all. You know, if you were going like 25% through the bolt or something, yeah, I'd definitely change it. But um, this is just scratches on the surface. So this is great. Uh, these bolts will last a long time more. All right, so I put that bolt back on, and so because I had hardly any wear on, on one of these lower bolts, I'm not going to check on everything, um, but if it was marginal, I definitely would, and I'd probably just go ahead and buy a full set for everything and buy, uh, replace all of them. So when you tighten these back in, um, so these are push, uh, sandwiching this little like donut shape, and... Um, Probably on my 50 hour, I'll pull that off and I'll look at the donut and see if it's deteriorated, but um, I'm sure it's it looks great. Um, so you don't need to do that as often. When you tighten these springs down, make sure you have a gap in between these springs like that. Um, you don't want to cinch this all down, otherwise there's no play. This should be able to kind of move back and forth. It is pretty stiff. Um, I have to kind of crank on it with one hand there you can see it moving kind of there um, so springs look great uh, those will probably are maybe a third through their lifespan at 20 hours maybe halfway we'll see what we get out of them I'm gonna check the couple gaskets here I'm, I'm just looking around uh, this exhaust gasket make sure I'm not getting any leaks it looks real good um, while I'm on it, I'm going to check the intake gasket and just, you wouldn't really notice anything, but I'm just looking at it for fun. <laughs> your exhaust gasket, you would have oil coming out. Uh, your intake gasket, you're not going to really see anything because it would just suck air in um, and then your motor would rev up. So next I'm going to check electrical. And so here I'm making sure that nothing's broken on any of my plugs. The plastic is all intact, you know, like these little retaining clips, nothing. Because, for example, let's say this plug came undone and this clip was broken. This could fly back to here and come into the prop, and that's no good. And it also is in a motor out. So um, that's my kill switch, just kind of following the electrical around. You want to be checking for any wear points like vibration can wear cables and stuff and so you're just looking for those kind of things um, there's some plugs back here um, so I'm looking at this plug and 
there's there's no I have the zip tie on here see this is zip tie and it's broken you see that so let me pull this out so I just found that broken zip tie so these cables were zip tied to something and they're not going to get in too much trouble back here but I'm going to go ahead and zip tie those back up so that they're not flapping around back there. Just checking electrical. Make sure all these ground points are bolted in. None of that's loose. There's another one right over here. Everything looks really good. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Feel free to subscribe for other videos and uh, we'll see you guys next time.